once when an object is sinking in a fluid all right what are the forces acting on it gravity and buoyant force why buoyant force comes because of the pressure difference all right buoyant force is an outcome of the pressure difference now when the object is sinking inside the fluid the fluid which is in contact with the object for example if there is this beaker inside which an object is moving down okay so the fluid which is in contact with the surface will move with the solid yes or no that is what our basic assumption is that if a fluid is is in contact with a solid okay the contact means that it is moving with the solid if solid is at rest that surface is at rest if solid is moving the that layer of the fluid which is in contact with the solid is also moving with the solid okay now if the layer which is in contact with the solid moves with the solid will the fluid resist that if it has viscosity yes or no so because of the viscosity the fluid will resist its motion down so there will be one additional force that will act on an object apart from gravity and buoyant force that is viscous force that we have ignored earlier okay now since we are talking about the viscous force there will be a viscous force as well in a real fluid that will be applied in such scenario okay now what do you think this viscous force will depend on viscous force when an object is moving inside the water or inside the fluid should depend on what huh should it depend on mass does it matter how much is the mass of an object mass of the object will affect the gravity force what fluid is applying that is nothing to do with what is the mass of an object huh area area in contact are you getting it the area the surface area in, in contact so basically you are saying that geometry viscous force is proportional to what is the geometry now it is difficult to quantify with geometry it could be surface area it could be something else it could be surface area raised to power 2 or something else i don't know okay but definitely viscous force has to do with what is the geometry of the object all of you understood this okay see you can consider for example let's say you have uh two spheres of different masses that are moving inside the fluids with same velocity does it matter which object is heavier than it doesn't matter what fluid is applied okay so geometry it depends on what else viscous force should depend on viscous force should depend on what is the velocity of the object what else coefficient of viscosity is that you should have told the first it should depend on what is the property of the fluid itself which is coefficient of viscosity are you getting it all right now see quantifying these two things is easy but quantifying the geometry is not easy are you getting it so for different kinds of shapes and sizes i will get a different different equation all right but in our syllabus viscous force on a sphere is there all right it is called stokes law all right if you if you change the shape if you say that what is the viscous force on a cube when it is sinking inside a liquid i don't know we don't have a ready made expression for that you need to calculate it are you getting it but what stokes have done stokes has uh, empirically found out an expression which is true for a sphere all right so next topic is stokes law please write down right on stokes law gives us 
Stokes law gives us an expression for Stokes law gives us an expression for the viscous force for the viscous flow force on on a spherical object okay all right it only tells about what is the viscous force on a spherical object when it is completely inside when it is completely inside the fluid it should not be partially inside completely it should be inside getting it and this is what the expression is viscous force is 6 pi eta a into velocity of the sphere where a is a radius Now, does it matter whether it is hollow sphere or a solid sphere? It doesn't matter. Because viscous force is applied on the surface. It should only depend on how the surface is. Doesn't matter what is inside. Fine? So, this is the expression for the Stokes law. Any doubt in this? And please write down the direction of viscous force will be. What is the direction of viscous force will be? Upward? What do you think? Ajah, what if the object is moving like this? Then there will not be any viscous force? Against the velocity. Please write down direction of viscous force will be opposite to the velocity. It is like a drag force. Alright? It's like air drag or you can say kinetic friction sort of. But they are not exactly the same. I am just telling you how they correlate. Alright? So it is against the velocity. Now we do a numerical based on this itself. Please write down. No doubt, right? Here is an expression for viscous force. Please note down, you have a beaker as always. The density of the fluid inside the beaker is rho. Okay? And inside the fluid, there is a spherical object. The Density of this object is sigma, the radius is A. Fine. Now, this is sinking inside the liquid. If it is sinking, what should the relation between sigma and rho? Sigma must be more than rho, otherwise, it will float. It can displace a little bit volume whose mass will be equal to the mass of the object itself and will float. Alright? Now, if sigma is more than rho and you leave it from the surface, it will go down because of the gravity and buoyant force is not sufficient to make it stop or decrease its velocity. So, it will continuously increase its velocity. Net force is downward. Accession is there. So, what will happen? Velocity will keep on increasing. If velocity keeps on increasing, Viscous force will? Viscous force is what? Viscous force is 6 pi eta a into v. If velocity keeps on increasing, viscous force will keep on increasing. And it is acting upward when you drop it. It is moving down, right? Viscous force will be upward. So if its velocity keeps on increasing, viscous force also keeps on increasing, there will be a point at which viscous force will balance out the other forces and net force will become zero. Right now, when velocity is very less, gravity force is more than the buoyant force. As velocity increases, the viscous force keeps on increasing and at some point, viscous force 
will be able to balance out the difference between gravity and the point force. And from that point onwards, net force is zero, so acceleration will be zero, but velocity will be constant. All right, and that velocity is called terminal velocity. Terminal is something that happens after a long time at the end. Okay, so this velocity which remains, which become constant after some time is called terminal velocity. Vt is referred as terminal velocity. You need to find out what is that terminal velocity. Equate net force to zero for the terminal velocity. Mass you have to write in terms of density. Mass is sigma into 4 by 3 pi a q. If you are writing mg force. All of you are done? It is just balance of forces. Okay. Done? Anything in that much? Bye. Next. Huh? Drop the forces. Bye. Okay, I do it now. Listen here, all of you. This is there is a sphere moving inside the fluid. So first force I am drawing is mg. What is m? Density into volume 4 by 3 pi a cube into g. Any doubt? Okay. There will be a viscous force. How much will be the viscous force? Density of the fluid into the volume which is displaced into G. Rho V G. What did I say? No, I said two and four. This is a buoyant force. Okay, weight of the liquid displaced. And there will be a viscous force also. Vesta force will be 6 pi eta a b. Three, only three forces are there. Alright? If velocity is constant, some of these three forces should be equal to 0. Alright? So this is what I am writing here. 6 pi eta a b plus rho into 4 by 3 pi a cube g minus sigma into 4 by 3 pi a cube g is equal to 0. So from here you get velocity as 2 by 9 get on? eta no eta will be the denominator g will be the numerator and there should be sigma minus rho here eta should be denominator and a should be expression. So what is the expression? Two a square, two a square g. Numerator will have a square g. If you simplify, you get it. Hmm, that's it. How many of you got this? Now tell me this expression which is coming. You can also verify it. For example, if sigma is equal to rho. Terminal velocity should be zero, it should be floating. Yes or no? If sigma is equal to rho, density of object is same as density of fluid. So it will just sink inside and stop. Buoyant force will be able to balance it. And it also tells us that sigma should be more than rho. Terminal velocity cannot be negative. So if you drop something, it will not just jump upwards. Velocity cannot be negative. Fine? Any doubts? We have equated net force to be zero. Is it clear? No doubts, right? Are you getting it? Have you done laws of motion properly? You are studying on your own before this. Both of you, you are studying on your own. 
प्लीज गो टू अवर यूट्यूब चैनल फर्स्ट सब्सक्राइब इट एंड देन यू कैन वॉच अवर ओके डोंट टॉक नाउ विल बी सॉल्विंग एंड न्यूमेरिकल वन मोर न्यूमेरिकल ड्रॉ बिगर बकेट You know, at times in J, they'll just draw something to make you feel that it is something different. So sometimes people who don't study uh, properly, they will oh, there should be something because of this. You know, this is not a proper bucket. So they start putting their brain, okay, why it is like this, cut like that. Okay, but anyways, you guys are smarter. <laughs> Suppose this is a scenario. The density of the fluid is rho. Keep quiet. Density of this is rho. Okay. The density of this object is sigma one. Density of that object is sigma two. The radius of this is a. Radius of that is b. Okay. Fine. Now. Um, you need to find out the tension in this string which connects them. If coefficient of viscosity is eta, at the time when terminal velocity has reached, find out tension at the time when terminal velocity has reached. Of course, rho will be less than sigma one and sigma two. There are few assumptions that will come out when you get the get the final expression. Okay, then and the tension should not be zero. Otherwise, this will sink faster. If this moves down faster velocity than that is moving faster, the string will lose. All right, that is not the case. Okay. This is 
sigma 1 into 4 by 3 pi a cube g stop talking is rho into 4 by 3 pi a cube g and there will be a viscous force 6 pi eta into a into b okay Pi eta A B plus the buoyant force minus T minus sigma 1 4 by 3 pi A Q G is equal to 0. How many of you got both the equations correct? What we should do? We need to eliminate V, right? We need to eliminate V. So keep keep 6 pi eta AB this side, 6 pi eta BB that side and divide it. V will be gone. Getting it? If you subtract, this is B and this is A. You, you subtracted and removed it. Congratulations. <laughs> Why would you do that? Okay? And then you can find the terminal velocity also. In this case, terminal velocity will not be equal to 2 by 9 a square eta is rho minus sigma by g. Okay? Because there is a string also. Got it? So like this you have to do. 